If you're interested in this laptop, then let me tell you this. The ASUS ZenBook 14 OLED UX3402 that we have here isn't exactly that much different from the ZenBook 14 X OLED Space Edition UX5401 that we have reviewed recently. There are a few differences here and there though, and that is what makes this laptop a more logical purchase compared to the Space Edition. Why do I say that? Well, let's find out in today's video. Okay, so we'll start off with the obvious first, the looks. Since this is a standard edition laptop, there's no fancy design on this laptop. However, this laptop still commemorates the 30th anniversary of ASUS. Yes, we have this Star Trek looking logo thing at the front here, which I honestly prefer over the concentric circles on Zenbooks of yesteryear. Better yet, this new matte design doesn't catch any fingerprints too. There is another thing that's new though, and that is the hinge. You see, this supremely shiny glossy hinge that we have here is a combination of both old and new technologies. You see, if we open the hinge beyond 90 degrees, then the ergo lift will engage. This means that the whole laptop will be lifted off at a slight angle to provide a better typing experience. And also some cooling airways too since the bottom isn't touching the table or any surface that you're putting this laptop on. And this hinge also allows the screen to go all the way back to 180 degrees flat. However, this laptop doesn't have a touchscreen and uh, I think this is the one of the biggest complaints that I have about this laptop. And speaking of the screen, this is an OLED screen with a resolution of 2880 by 1800 pixels and a refresh rate of 90Hz. Sure, that sounds amazing on paper, right? And rightly so, actually, because this specific laptop that we have here comes with a what I presume to be a higher grade of OLED panel compared to many other ASUS OLED laptops out there. In the past, when we reduce the brightness below 55%, then it becomes PWM dimming. However, for this laptop, it seemingly maintains DC dimming all the way through down to 1% of brightness, which is a huge plus point because our eyes wouldn't get fatigued by the constant flickering of PWM dimming. And as for color accuracy, what we have tested is at 100 nits of brightness and it can reach up to 100% of sRGB color gamut and 99.96% .96 of DCI-P3. And yet this is not surprising to me since all of the ASUS OLED laptops that we've tried in the past also have fantastic color accuracy. What's different here though is the maximum brightness. Our colorimeter reported that this screen can go beyond 400 nits of brightness which means that it is still not bright enough to be used under direct sunlight but it should be enough under some shade. And then comes this keyboard here. I was typing this entire script in complete darkness because, well, there was an electricity outage in my house so at that time I thought it was the perfect time to actually test the battery life of this laptop so I typed out this entire review script on this laptop. I think we should highlight a few things about this keyboard here because I think that ASUS recently changed to this new big size centered but thin legends on their keycaps and I like this look overall and also the keys are still very springy and have a good travel distance. It also feels great to bottom out and it does have some bounce back making it really fun to type on. And there's also one thing that I really like which is the placement of the delete key and the power button. You see, they have swap position, usually it's the power button at the far right corner here. But for those who have muscle memory like me, to spam the top right corner to delete, then this keyboard is actually perfect for those people that are like me. So I think this is really good. And yes, there is still a dedicated print screen button if you're worried about that. The trackpad is fairly basic. It does what it needs to do and it also has good tracking, good palm rejection and it also comes with the number pad feature which is this one. If you like to use this feature then there you go, this feature is still here. As for the specs, this laptop comes with the new family of mobile processors, the Intel Core i7-1260P. We've talked more about the three families within the 12th gen Intel Core processors in another video so check it out at the top right corner there. And in this video, we're just going to show you some quick screenshots about the performance of the Core i7-1260P to show you what it is capable of. 
combined with 16 gigs of DDR5 for the 800 megahertz. And yes, I have tried some games on this laptop. The performance is still, well, kind of bottlenecked by the Iris X eGPU. I mean, this is pretty much the same Iris X eGPU from the 11th gen U series of processors. And this new P series of chips is even exactly the same power rating, the same TDP as last year's high powered U series of processors. You know, it's funny that this morning I read an article by Notebook Check where they published this article saying that the Core i5 1240p can outperform a Core i7 1260p and I find that to be amusing because we'll surely revisit this point later in this video. So what's new with the 12th gen chips? Well, in general is the separation of P cores and E cores which is aptly named the performance cores and efficiency cores. This definitely plays a role in prolonging the battery life as we can easily get more than 8 hours out of a single charge while using it in silent power profile at 55% brightness while typing this script with a few chrome tabs open at the background. And one more thing I realized is that this laptop also comes with a 100W USB Type-C charger. I have not used the charger at all because I just left it in the box and I used my Ugreen 100W scan charger instead. That is because I want further convenience and I want to declutter my desk so I just kept the original charger that came with this laptop in the box. And now let's talk about the ports available. I'd say that it is pretty well-rounded as it has a USB Type-A and a USB Type-C and also a full-size HDMI port. I think this is what most people want when it comes to ports on their laptops. Upgradability and serviceability are two things that I need to highlight here because to open up this laptop is another problem on its own. It uses Torx screws and there are two more hidden screws underneath the rubber padding around the two corners and the hinge side. I really hate hidden screws by the way. And once we've opened it up, like many ASUS laptops that were released recently, nothing can be upgraded. We can only swap out the SSD and the Wi-Fi chip if we want to, and both the fan and heatsink can also be serviced easily, and that's pretty much it. We have nothing else to see in here, so let's close it back. So, at the end of the day, should you buy the ASUS ZenBook 14 OLED UX3402? Well, there are actually two variants available for this laptop so we'll show you on the screen right now. So it comes with a Core i7 model with 1TB SSD and the other version which is a Core i5 with 512GB of SSD. There is a pretty significant price gap between these two variants and I'll still say that the Core i5 model is actually very good in terms of value and what it has to offer. This is ultimately still a thin and light laptop and it comes with a surprisingly good battery life and also a significantly better OLED screen with a high resolution and also pretty good refresh rate. And we can still play some games at the side as well. It's just that this laptop is still missing a touchscreen. Other than that, I think that this laptop is pretty fantastic in its own league and it's pretty much near perfect. So that's it, that's all we have to share with you about the ASUS ZenBook 14 OLED UX3402. So if you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.